T Walker Walker Wide session number 20. Maybe it's like that. Backwards on screen. Uh, welcome back. I've got a fun bottle with you today. Another French wine um, from uh, Southern Rhone from the Vin 2, V E N T O U X. It is a bottling called Megaphone. Like that kind of megaphone. Um, 2020 vintage megaphone Ventu wine. Um, it is from the uh, Brunier brothers um, who own View Telegraph. It's a, uh, one of the uh, heralded wineries of Chateauneuf de Pop in the Southern Rhone. Um, it is a blend of 80% Grenache, 20% Syrah, um, not aged particularly very long in uh, 500 liter barrels. So kind of double in size of the standard barrel. Um, I would assume from tasting this, it's all neutral barrel. I couldn't find that information, but uh, anywho, um, I'm gonna pour a little bit in the glass. This is day two on this wine. Um, I'll tell you about how it was on day one as well. Um, and Vin 2 is, is, a, is a cool area. I know it. I have not been personally, but um, there's the Cote de Vin 2. And then actually, I don't know if I've seen a wine that just says Vin 2 on it, but uh, Vin 2 is, a, is kind of a, a, a mountain, but it's a, a bald mountain. And, and one of the main reasons why I know about it is because of the Tour de France, the big bike race that they have um, in France in the middle of summer. Um, and uh, maybe once every handful of years or so, they have uh, a leg of that race that goes up the Ventoux, and it's this very often um, very breezy, hot um, leg of the race uh, where the, the mountain is kind of bald. It's, um, there's very few trees because of the wind, apparently, that, that is there, and the, um, the, the, the soil is, has a very large sandy component. Um, so yeah, they, uh, it's, it's a very kind of dramatic place, if you will. Um, this wine, um, like I said, is 80% Grenache, 20% Syrah. And, um, I was really digging it yesterday, um, right out of the bottle. And, um, this is in the lower to mid twenties price point wise. Um, I have not uh, had this wine before and or seen it, um, but my experience yesterday was lovely. And um, day two, I will let you know uh, how it is and um, currently and, and then what my thoughts were from yesterday. Hmm. Definitely a fruit, fruit driven nose, a cherry, all the like red fruits, the and bright, like bright, um, kind of really red, red luscious cherries and raspberry on the nose. You definitely sense a little bit of alcohol, not necessarily in a bad way though. Uh, I think it kind of lifts the palate a little bit. I think even in the back of the label, they, um, they talk about uh, that there is Garrigue, G-A-R-I-G-U-E, Garrigue, Garrigue in this wine. Um, and to be honest, I don't know the technical definition for it, but I've always felt like it's this kind of um, intensity um, that is maybe very simply kind of earthy, but uh, lands itself into like an umami, um, you know, like uh, truffles or wasabi, soy sauce, those things go into that umami category. So it has this like rich, intense kind of um, wine cellar that's kind of old and um, uh, characterful, if <laughs> that's a good term, um, with that kind of rich, dark, oily, um, intense kind of, uh, I don't taste soy sauce or, or certainly wasabi, um, but this like kind of rich, um, good funk in a good way. It's not funky whatsoever, but just this rich kind of um, kind of darkness to the wine that you would kind of picture a wine cellar being. 
um, an old world French wine cellar. I'm sure there's a technical term, uh, which I've never bothered to look up, and it may be way off the mark from what I described, but um, for the moment, I'm gonna go with what I described to y'all. But it's got that kind of earthy, umami, interesting um, component that's an undertone of, um, an underlayment of the fruit, which is the, the dominating force. Yesterday, the fruit was just so bright and bubbly in an uh, excitable way, not a, a, a spritzy carbon dioxide champagne kind of way, but bubbly as an expressive. And uh, it was phenomenal yesterday. I would say um, the nose I enjoyed more yesterday, although it's still lovely, it's just all kind of softened today on day two. Oh wow, there's also this lavender that I was not getting. I tasted just a little bit earlier, uh, about 20 minutes ago. It's an interesting, beautiful lavender component, which to be honest, I have never said lavender, I don't think in my life when tasting wine. Mm, beautiful herbal component there. Um, this wine is expressive. That Grenache really shines through, I think, with that fruit. The Grenache has that fruit, and the soil the soils are um, described as being rocky clay and sandy. And Grenache can be very um, red fruit driven and also bright. And then sandy soils often make a wine that is very aromatic. Um, and so I think those two things combine for me and maybe their style of winemaking, maybe there's a little carbonic maceration. Um, we'll talk about that at the end of the, uh, the video, carbonic maceration. Um, the wine is just fresh and lively. Let's give it a taste. Beautiful texture, silky, fleshy like a peach on the mid palate. Tannins come through on that mid palate to finish. Very, um, very uh, uh, dispersive. That's probably not a word in the mouth. Um, spreads out. Um, yeah, really coats everything quite well. And the tannin, that kind of garig and fruit lingers in a very kind of salivating and um, almost chewy kind of way as in you kind of find yourself sitting there uh, one minute later moving your mouth around like you're wanting to chew uh, because of that tannin acid balance that's really lovely um, I love the texture of this wine it's very fresh but not not uh, too high in acid um, it's definitely got bright acidity but it still has a nice round silkiness to it um, with that fresh freshness. Just a beautiful aromatic fruit forward, um, kind of intoxicating um, feminine rose petal, but it's feminine nose, but intense. Yeah, you get the, the layers of all that fruit, that tannin, then you get, maybe there's a little bit of oak there, but not much. You get the kind of the cola spices, which makes me think there's a little bit of wood or um, a little bit of oak uh, influence, but those kind of like, I would say for me, it's not a straight, big, rich Coca-Cola, more of like a Diet Coke, um, but those, those kind of fun uh, spices that you get with with a soda pop. Um, so yeah, lovely finish. Um, just a really delicious, a delicious wine. So let's talk, I'm gonna talk really quickly about uh, carbonic maceration. So maceration in the wine world um, is when you have uh, uh, grapes or fruit um, clusters all sitting with some form of juice. Um, uh, there's a, uh, kind of cold maceration, which uh, happens uh, before fermentation starts. 
and then um, while the fermentation is happening, you've got the, the, the um, skins and, and stems if they're in there and whatever other things might be floating around, that solid mass is macerating with the juice and or wine if it's already fermenting. Um, and so what happens with carbonic maceration is that during that process, if the berries are left whole, so they're not distemmed or they're distemmed well. So it's either whole clusters normally um, or very good distemmer, but usually it's whole clusters. So um, they would just throw the whole clusters in there and into the, the, the fermenting vat or tank. And there's some juice usually, but maybe there's not. And um, what happens is that as the grape starts to ferment, it will actually ferment in, inside of the berry itself and what happens is that that during that process um, often they will close the lid on a tank um, to create pressure and those berries will actually like blow um, but that process of fermenting inside the berry um, like that when they're intact um, creates this very you have all the car the carbon dioxide which is the carbonic part but the carbon dioxide is trapped inside the fruit inside the berry it's not released because because it's all squished up and just immediately dissipates into uh the air it's trapped inside that berry and if you close the tank lid it helps that process occur and what happens is that the wine uh, takes on this very bright almost like bubble gum but very fruity um, intense in your face profile and it's really interesting there's a few different styles of wine that have that um, Beaujolais Nouveau has that um, carbonic maceration I would say it's one of the most uh, well-known uh, wines that um, you will see the carbonic maceration process so I highly recommend that come Thanksgiving this year in 2023 um, or whenever you're watching it in Thanksgiving when Beaujolais Nouveau comes out go grab you a bottle um, that will be a great expression of carbonic maceration. There's a couple other areas. Um, I think uh, the grape uh, Frappato, the Cerasuola di Vittoria, it's a kind of unique grape in, uh, wine, or wine in Italy. Um, that, is, um, that is made, I think, in a generally or normally in a, in a kind of carbonic maceration style. But um, a lot of people employ that technique to varying degrees. You can do just a little portion of the wine in that and uh, obviously blend it into a bigger thing. But um, that, that carbonic maceration to, in the wine, once the wine's presented like it is right now, um, it tends to blow off over time. Meaning like, like today, the wine was very different on the nose yesterday compared to today. Much more subdued, although it's still intense, but it's not as um, overtly kind of fruity. Um, now those fruits have kind of soften, softened and um, have deepened. But uh, let's give it one last whirl before we move on um, to going to sleep. This is a late night video for me. Mm, juicy. Man, just juicy. Juicy. Just screaming for a piece of lamb. Oh, lamb with that mint, mint jelly. Oh, that would be perfect. Perfect. Um, it's good components. It's got this, uh, it's got this great, the finish. I feel like there's a, like a juicy peach ring. You know, those peach candies that came in a ring. Um, very uh, rich, um, ripe style of peach flavor oddly enough in this red wine that's um, quite quite cool quite interesting and quite delicious um, thank you for joining me leave a comment um, subscribe uh, like like the video if you liked it and uh, let me know what you're drinking um, if you've had this wine or if you've had anything from the Rhone or Grenache or Syrah what your thoughts are um, and uh, we'll see you next time Ciao, ciao.